I don't really weigh this loss too bad against him, but I don't weigh this win too much for him. Does that make sense? That's what yeah. I was saying the whole time. or anything but it could use one more it ain't got to be an a plus fight or nothing like that but like like something else and i think the edson barboza and the yeah. tapuria fight was that fight and, so. al and also i was going to say that this is a, a second chance fight for a lot of fighters but yeah. it's really a last chance fight because some of these guys if they lose this fight they're out of the ufc yeah th this fight determined if you're going to go into 2023 unemployed or looking for another job because some people they gotta make some things happen. You got a couple of fighters on here. I didn't know they were still in the UFC. So I was surprised to see a, a couple of fighters on and, here. And then uh, some of these fighters too, a, a lot of these guys, they lost, they're coming off of a loss where they took fights on short notice. Like, did you notice that? Yeah. Like there are several fights where uh, people took fights on short notice, but now they're getting matched up with somebody else who also lost on short notice. I'm like, that's kind of crazy. You think you want to give people a, a little bit better opportunity where uh, two guys who did a solid for the UFC wouldn't be in a position where one of them would be getting you know, another loss. But anyway, let's dive into it. Let's go here. Cody Durden and Clayson Rodriguez. So we got Clayson Rodriguez here. Nickname is KR. They're going to be fighting in the flyweight division. Uh, his pro record is 7-2. He is coming off of a loss to CJ Vergara, but that was a split decision, and it was kind of a toss-up. Uh, it, it was like a 50-50 fight. Even uh, Vergara, I mean, in the context that he said it, he, he said in the post-fight interview that in fights where he doesn't dominate and it goes to decision, he assumes he's going to lose. Yeah, but it would have been fair to assume he lost this one anyway because it was too close. And he got outstruck. Like, to me, it was kind of close, but to me, it was a clear loss for him. I think Clayson won that one. And, uh, and it was a good showing for a UFC debut, but just the, the judges didn't really see it like that. But as far as his fighting style, man, he likes to use a lot of spinning attacks, mm -hmm. spinning back kicks to the body, to the head, um, very kick heavy. Like, the hands are there, but... One thing I like, he throw kicks from different angles, too. Like, he go to the inside, outside, leg kicks. So it's like, you never know which angle he gonna come from. That's true. And one thing is when he gets taken down, he can get back to the feet, like real quick. He don't just let you post up and start setting up, uh, you know, passing guard or submissions and stuff. It's like, nah, I gotta get straight back to the feet immediately. And he can get takedowns and stuff too, but he was able to take down CJ. And yeah. I think that's what made, I think that's what won him that fight against CJ, the takedowns. So yeah, he can't go, he can't go into that bag. He does, uh, he, he has constant pressure. That's one thing I took down in my notes. Like he, he's always trying something. Like he don't just let people, you know, take momentum and do whatever they want and, and have the momentum. Like he will keep being active at all times. He uses all of his limbs, kicks, punches, elbows, knees, mostly kicks. It's nothing. He has real good footwork and he's he's real slick with his counter punches. He has a counter fly knee he throws and he has yes. a counter a sneaky counter left hook. So he's real like clever with his striking. And, he, and like you said, he does mix it up well to where you don't really know exactly what he's going to do. He has like a, a finesse or like a, like a suave with his striking. Like he looks very comfortable. So that's always a good thing to see. Now, one thing is he, he only throws like one or two punches at a time. If he was to follow up with it, throw like a one, two and a left hook. One, two, go to the body. You know, it's funny. You know who else does that kind of, but he don't have the power. Edson kind of does it too. Sometimes he can yeah. throw one strike at a time. That's how he beats and sometimes, he, sometimes Edson lose fights like that against somebody who's going to throw like combinations. Sometimes they can outwork him sometimes. I've noticed that Edson Barboza against Shane Burgos, he did that, but he was finishing the combos with kicks a lot of times. Mm. So if you, throw the, if you throw the punches and slip out of the way and then throw the kick, now you're getting into that Muay Thai style versus your boxing and your kicking is almost like two separate things. You, you see what I'm saying? Depending on the exchange. And that's another thing with Clayson, he throw his kicks like punches. You know how like a, he, he throw his kicks like jab, one, two. That's how he throw his kicks like pop, pop. Like he's real quick, like quick attacks. Like uh, Umar Nurmagomedov yeah. kind of does that. 
like, no wind up. Pretty much just use his legs and kicks as a way to keep you at distance and control the range yeah. so he can do other things. So he throws his kicks to kind of set up the counter, the, the counter left hook, the counter knees, because he put power into his counter strikes. This fight uh, becomes grappling heavy. I did notice in some of his fights, he would get taken down, but he would pop back up. The thing is, like you said, he can get his own takedown, but sometimes he seemed lost. Like he wanna, he he wants to keep the fight standing up. So, but he can get takedowns. But when he gets the takedowns, he don't really have a takedown game plan. Like he don't go for double leg takedowns. It's usually clinch, and then he can get a takedown. Yeah. Which I think that is very smart. Now that I'm thinking about it, a lot of people don't do that. But when he get the fight to the ground. Unless, like, there was one fight where he he had somebody's back, like he kind of suplexed them, and he took their back just because of the type of takedown it was, and led yeah. to a rear naked choke. But if he just get a takedown from the clinch, a lot of times people on their back, and he just kind of kicking them standing up. But he don't, he not passing guard, you know. Yeah, it's, uh, it's 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 almost like position over submission, but it's like he's scoring points all the time. So he's almost like a decision fighter, kind of. which is not a bad thing because when you get in the top ten, it's hard to finish guys in top five, top ten. So. He can win a lot of fights when he fight tougher opponents if he can win on points. Uh, overall, you know, he's solid everywhere. Yeah. Pr pretty good. Had a good close fight. He didn't give up against CJ. So, which I think he won that fight, to be honest. Yeah. So, and and, and this is an interesting match because on the other side, we have Cody Durden. He's and like the opposite. Cody is like the opposite because he throws combinations. and But he's not even the best striker, but you can see the improved striking and you can see the things he does well. And he got that power too. And he does have power. He, he don't have the prettiest striking. Now he is 13 and four overall, uh, fighting out of Atlanta, Georgia. They, they're saying here that he's affiliated with American top team, Atlanta. Uh, is that where Rafael Asensio? I don't know. But, okay, so I'm looking at the record here. The uh, thing that stands out is he alternates wins and losses. That's the biggest thing. To be fair, Muhammad would be anybody yeah, he's who ain't in the top five at, at this point. Yeah, he's undefeated. He's going to stay undefeated for, for a, a minute. long time. And I mean, that's just his pro record. That's not including the amateur record, but the... the and that's, that's speak, speaking of amateurs, Muhammad had a bunch of amateur fights. So I'm saying, like, he lost to somebody with a lot of experience. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. You know, so... Yeah. Because you can't be fooled by just the pro record. Because it was probably almost 20. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, yeah. So, this right here is a little bit tricky because... Again, Mokayev, I mean, you might put him in there with some top five guys and, and they might not make it out. So, this this flying triangle thing, though, man, I, I, I'll i be honest. He was winning that fight, too. I mean, he it was, was winning. only a minute fight. I mean, it was only a three minute fight. But he though. was out striking him, though, bad. It, he was, like, on the way to victory. That's what make this, that's what make that kind of weird. And, okay, then he won the decision. But that's, that's so rare. When do we still fly in triangle? Uh, Pablo Garza. From when the U when the WC merged with the UFC, that was the last time I saw one. But I'm not gonna hold this one against him. Then the JP Bays, he won in a minute, and he should have. You know, that fight went the way it was supposed to go. Get JP out of there in a minute because I don't really think that he's ready for the UFC. I don't think he's ever been ready, um, and I don't think he'll be ready for a long time. And not knocking the win, it's good to get back in the win column, get paid. Because if Clayson gets hurt, Clayson is not going to make those type of decisions. No. He's yep. shooting for takedowns. It, it was a lot of low IQ moves yeah, that led JP. to that. Yeah. But, hey, Cody did everything he was supposed to do. Yeah. And he did show that he does have some power. But JP has been dropped two or three times in every fight. Two or three. One fight, he got dropped like six times. Yeah. So, I don't really weigh this loss too bad against him. But I don't weigh this win too much for him. Does that make sense? That's what yeah. I was saying the whole time. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, it's kind of like, eh. So this fight right here, now one thing about Cody, obviously we know he's a wrestler. He's got power, right? Like it ain't Johnny Hendricks power and it ain't like Anthony Johnson with pretty striking. But one thing I actually give Cody an advantage of, he actually uses a jab. And that jab is gonna weigh, it's gonna outweigh a lot of other things that Clayson can do. You have to set it up, man. You can't just throw a spinning back kick out of nowhere, man. I'm sorry, they don't land like that. Like, Edson lands them, but look at, he uses a jab better than almost anybody. And placing, you're not just going to randomly throw a spinning back kick to the body or to the head and get a knockout. You're going to have to use some type of setup. So I think that uh, Clayson obviously has the stand-up advantage, but Cody's going to be in there with the jab. And if you only got a jab and you can set that up and just land that overhand right, that could change the complexion of the fight. 
Cody has a jab, but he doesn't follow up. Another thing is Cody is always full pressure. Like he always yeah. walks forward, but that has got him in trouble. That's how uh, Makayev dived in on that guillotine. Because Cody, it was just like, Cody, what are you doing? Like you just, like you don't see this, like you're not aware of this. So, but I do think Cody is getting better. How you see the fight playing out? He, so he's two and two with a draw? Yeah. Cody? Damn, man. Like yeah. uh, Chris Gutierrez was a draw. Wow, so that we could be looking at him being two and three in the UFC. Dang. Well, we can't hold a Muhammad fight against him because of that's, Muhammad that's why I said I'm not even really looking at that. I'm not even really looking at that old JP Bay. I think Clayson has a style to kind of negate Cody. Cody's striking and just fight smart and just win a decision. Hopefully, hopefully, if he uh, outpoints Cody, they give him this fight because the last one they didn't give him. But Clayson, I like the way he fights, man, because he counters. But like he doesn't really take a lot of chances, but he does look for opportunities to hurt his opponent. But he's not just standing there banging and throwing wild punches. Every now and then he can get a little bit wild. But I just don't think Cody had a style to capitalize. But Clayson might counter something and knock something out, though. Now now we can go to that side of the conversation. Nothing, let me say this, too. Another thing is Cody does put his hands down at times. So you walk forward and he, he can run to a, a knee or a left hook, man. So, I mean... I think the safe bet would say Cody by decision just because he's got multiple wins in the UFC. Again, the opponents though, let me go check out. I mean, this guy 24-9. That ain't bad. That's actually a lot of the experience. Who is that? 24-9. The person that Cody beat. Oh yeah. And this this dude only lost in the UFC to Jeff Molina. Oh well actually, yeah, he's two and two. Hey, that's a lot of experience, but I'm gonna go with Clayson here. Clayson might have more upside. Yeah, and Clayson, he did lose a close, a super close so, fight, man. So, so Clayson is seven and two, and both his losses are close fights that he arguably won. So Cody might be a bad matchup in that sense because in the UFC we know how they sport fights that go to decision. You know what I'm saying? Clayson might be undefeated. Clayson might be undefeated. But at the same time, that also means that he he might get beat the same exact way that because in the UFC we know how they score it for grapplers. Even if you're not doing nothing with the position. Even if you're not advancing position or dropping massive ground and is Cody Is Cody a grappler? He has two losses by submission. Mostly, yeah. He's mostly a, a wrestler with like a freestyle fighter, but wrestler with some, some knockout power. Not necessarily beautiful striking, but just knockout power. The safe bet for me is Cody by decision, just because we know he can do it. And Clayson has lost close decisions. So, yeah. and Cody can make it close. But I'm gonna lean more towards Clayson because I feel like he got more ways to win. Me too. I'm gonna go with Clayson too. And and the thing is, I think Cody make more mistakes. He does. Clayson don't make that many mistakes. Yeah. So and, and, and the way. Oh, what you say? I was gonna say uh, Clayson by decision. That's and, what I was gonna say. And the way that Clayson was losing, he should be able to clean that up now. If you lost two close fights, now you should be you should be able to clean that up. Because that means you making you making bad decisions throughout the fight, basically. You see what I'm saying? Or you're not capitalizing. It's a lot of what you're not doing. It's not that. It's the fact that it's CJ Vergara's style. CJ walks forward, and it's almost like he creates the illusion that he's doing more than he's not. I think uh, Clayson took that fight on show notice as well, if I'm not mistaken. Clayson's problems can be fixed. I think with Cody, when you make like bad IQ moves, like not to be disrespectful, when you make certain moves, like you're getting flying triangled and. You deep, you neck deep into a guillotine, and you still keep going for the takedown. It's like uh, it's almost like there's a hurdle that Cody can't get over, and we know that both of these losses are against good guys. But it's something about losing to a certain level, even if it was kind of like I'm not gonna say BS, but even if you should have won those fights, the fact that you still lost, he can kind of get put in that Neil Magny kind of category where you only can beat guys outside of the top 15. He needs to break out. Like uh, Cody Brundage. Remember Cody Brundage? Oh, yeah. Late, they all said in the win streak. But at the same time, this could be the fight that sets off. Because if he win this one, this will be two in a row. I mean, I'm going to go with Clayson. I'm not going to lie. I'm, oh, you can go. His problems could be cleaned up a little more. What you saying? No, I was just going to say this. I like both these guys. Yeah. And they're both bringing a lot to the flyweight division. Yes, Cody, he needs to be more consistent. Because obviously, like he's not going to be in the top 10 if he keeps alternating wins and losses. But I still like what both of these guys bring. Because the, the flyweight division is kind of like... You have people in the top three, and you don't have nobody else. Well, the top four. That nobody actually yeah. cares about, no matter what they do. Yeah, so, so, I mean, it's bringing... But then again, Muhammad's in the flyweight division, too. So, I mean, if neither, neither one of these guys can beat Muhammad. So, I mean... But he might be the future champion one day, so... The safe bet is Clayson. 
I think that's a safe bet, man. Uh, just because of the way, if Cody was losing decisions, then I would say, yeah, I would say Cody by decision but, at the very but least. But Clayson ain't got the style to submit Cody. That's what gets real interesting. I think he does because I saw some very slick and underrated submissions from Clayson. That's what made me think. Now, I don't think he can out-wrestle him, but if he can hurt him on the feet, obviously, then it opens up the doors for takedowns. It opens up the doors for submissions. Yeah. And Cody... But Cody seems like he wants it more, too, than a lot of guys. Well, he fights. Sometimes that hunger, without doing it the right way, get him caught, though. Because yeah. remember, he was trying to go for it against Mikhaya, got caught. Yeah. Jimmy Flick got caught. So you got to be careful with it. So uh, I'm ultimately picking Clayson. Yeah, me too. I'm going to go with But decision. I wouldn't be surprised if Cody won, though. Yeah. I want to make that real. And, and, yeah, and I was going to pick a close decision back and forth, but just the.